Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Q&A highlights from December 9th, 2019. The Shaykh began by answering the question of a Numurida who took hand and started seeing Do, what she called Do, instead of saying Nur, she said Do, which means light, but in um, in modern Arabic it also means the, the light is generated by electricity in contrast to Nur, which is ascribed to Allah Ta'ala. So she started seeing Do on her left and on her right side, and the Shaykh went into an extensive discussion about the organs of sight and hearing and speech and so on the tongue they're all light it's all one I become the hearing with which he hears and the seeing with which he sees and so on all the organs dissolve into one in the Malakut there are no directions you say that on the left side you saw Noor on the right side you saw Noor in the Malakut, it's one, it's one nur, and directions dissolve. It's al-abd and the rab Then the Shaykh went into a discussion of the dynamic between Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, the Archangel of Revelation, and the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. And, and he discussed what it means when a Shaykh tells the murid at the end, book. this is where I leave you and your Lord. And he discussed how even though Jibreel alayhi salam was the Prophet's Shaykh in a sense and the wasita, the intermediary of the Prophet salam, in a different sense it's Jibreel, the arch- Archangel Gabriel who reached his limit of suluk with the Prophet alayhi salam on the Mi'raj when he said this is as far as I can go, if I go further I will dissolve. And so the Shaykh tells the Murid at a certain point, Ha and Tawarabbuk, it means that this is as far as you can go. This is the ceiling, the roof of your maqam in Suluk. And he tied into this the verse, Fa'lam annahu la ilaha illallah, know that there is no God but God. He said this means you have to have knowledge that the dunya claims divinity, the nafs claims divinity, shaitan claims divinity, they're all screaming out, Anna Allah, astaghfirullah, they all claim uluhiya. And you don't have knowledge of la ilaha illallah in this sense, except when you have knowledge of the naba'ul azim, of the tremendous naba, the tremendous tiding, which is expressed by the Prophet when he said, the best thing that I and the Prophets before me said are la ilaha illallah. The same goes for the nur that we talk about. You need a strength, you need a, an exertion of effort, a mujahada, to fix it and, and plant it firmly within your heart. You need this firmness and fixity with the ru'ya, with the direct vision of the nur. And when you have that fixity and firmness with the direct vision of the nur, then you need to master the language of the ru'ya, the language of the direct vision that you're having. This progression is embodied in the story of Sidna Ibrahim والسلام, when he was looking into the spiritual realm, the malakut, and he sees the plan. He sees the kawkab and he says, this is my Lord. Did he say it just with his tongue or with the language of light that people of spiritual illusion, of ishara and the people of light know and comprehend? You need the language of ishara, you need to master the language of spiritual illusions and the language of light in order to be able to begin your suluk having firmness in the ru'ya. The best that the Prophet ﷺ and I said is La ilaha illallah as the Prophet ﷺ says. This is an Arabic language. But there's an inner connection, a connection of ishara, of allusion to the spirit of the word. The ruhul kalima. The dot is the essence of every letter. The letters are contingent upon a that, an essence. Kokab, that's the planet of that or the, the resplendent star of that letter. So... This is what opens the doors to Lughatul Munajat, the language of intimate converse with Allah Ta'ala. Then the sweetness of intimate converse of Munajat is opened up. And Mukalama as well, direct converse. That's why Musa salam was the Kalim of God, God's direct converser in a state of Munajat, of, of intimate converse with God at all times. Your problem is not that you do not see the light. Addressing the Murid here, the new Murida. Your problem is, that, is not that you're, you're not seeing the light. It's that you don't understand its language. It took the Prophet ﷺ 23 years to learn that language. He took the Prophet ﷺ. In one sense, the Prophet ﷺ learned the language over the course of 23 years. In another sense, he learned it as one entire whole. Jumlatan wahida, as the Quran puts it. When his breast was cleaved open and washed with water and ice from a golden bowl. As a very young prepubescent child. He became light upon light and there was no share of darkness of the taghut, of the dark enemy within his heart. 
because if the heart is sound, the entirety of the human being is sound. He والسلام, his heart was completely sound and washed out completely. He became pure. That's why he passed out in the story. And Halima Sadia, his wet nurse, panicked. And the washing of his heart was before he attained the age of purity. This was in his earthly Adamic clay configuration. And we're even embarrassed to say the word clay because he's light upon light. But with respect to human nature, bihukmi al insaniya or al adamiya, he was pure in this manner. And what happens is that between that moment of the washing and the forty years that ensue before the proclamation of prophecy and the and his encounter with Jibril alayhi salam, there were experiences and events and moments that add up. There were miracles. He was speaking to rocks. Rocks recognized him by the soundness of his heart. Through the language of light, he had knowledge of Ishara of illusion before even his messengerhood, before the revelation. If the goal of Suluk was that alone, the Quran would not descend. He understood the language of animals and rocks and plants already. But that's not the goal. Remember, O Murid, what is the goal? The goal is Iqra bismi Rabbi kalladhi khalaq To read in the name of thy Lord who created Khalaq al-insana min alaq Created the human being from a clot The Murid wants to understand the matter He wants the language of Ishara He wants the language of trees and of rocks and of matter He wants how to learn how to extract things from matter But the supreme goal is to learn knowledge of certainty Ilmul yaqeen of the supreme name of al ismul alam read in the name of thy lord who created created man from a clot that is to say if you want to read the name of your lord abar rab rububiya is that which accepts rububiya there's a dynamic between lord and servant implied in this verse and the righteous abd the righteous servant is the wali wasil it's the friend of God who has attained. It's the insanul kamil, the perfect human being. This abd, this servant, this bondsman is implied within the verse. Read in the name of your Lord. Read, O servant, in the name of your Lord who created man from a clot. You read the name once you become a clot, a alaqa. A clot that's so small you need a microscope to see it. When you lower yourself and honor others, the torch of the path you become the lowest by honoring God's creatures by honoring sand and rocks and pebbles and animals and humans and you lower yourself you become smaller and smaller ever smaller until one day you'll see it with your own eyes you will see it with your own eyes ants are even bigger than you and here I open a parenthesis about a mushahada that the Sheikh had many years ago. He was sitting in the zawiyah, the earlier zawiyah that he had, and a kitten walked in. And he had this direct vision of the kitten being massive and him being very small. Well, I continue here. So you become this clot. When you become the lowest by honoring God's creatures, the rocks and the sand, and you lower yourself and become ever smaller until one day you see it with your own eyes, you see that ants are bigger than you. Then you realize that you become a clot, a halaqa less smaller than ants smaller than a grain of sand and you're embarrassed about your own presence and about yourself you fold up within you fold up within yourself like the heavens and the earth that were stitched together ratqan after having been fatq a compositional mass and stitching that then was unstitched you stitch yourself back in and gather your earth and your, the heavens of your own sky into a ratq into a stitched mass, into a clot, into a halaqa. If you can't do that, you cannot read the name of thy Lord. How do you become a halaqa? How do you become a clot? It's like a small dot, a particle. The Quran with all that it contains is Ali. Ali Karmullah said, I am the dot. It all collapses into the Fatiha, the Fatiha, into the Basmala, the Basmala, into the Ba. And there were no dots in the time of the inscription of the earliest period and so the, I am the dot meaning the dot that composes uh, like the building block of the letters that which is needed it's not necessarily just the dot that we see now under the path it's, it's the dot from which the letters are composed that flows through everything I am the nukta so you become that alaqa you become that dot you become that particle you become that unstitched mass and constriction ex teaches you then expansion. When God loves you, He tries you. You will never lower yourself 
with a strong body because you'll never say I'm weak you'll never lower yourself with a sharp tongue because you'll never say I'm ignorant you'll always see that you have a status in knowledge a ilmi status you'll see that you have a status in power passing away fana is to see that you have no existence and you can't know that unless you see that you are clot and with the smallest trial you express that you're a big mountain one little trial comes your way and you become a dinosaur not a blood clot so you'll never read the name of thy lord when god chooses his awliya he fashions them in this manner wastanatuka li nafsi i fashioned you for myself he takes the lowest of the low the lowest of society who are experiencing the lowliest points and find therein the greatest exaltation and honor and then they burst forth and become a gushing wellspring of knowledge this is like rabia al adawiyah it's as if she became a blood clot a slave girl turned into a great friend of god who left a fingerprint upon the earth and in the malakut she was fashioned by her lord stripped of all things of dignity of freedom she even became abdul abd a servant of a servant of god yet she still stood in night vigils and fasted the day so no one turned to her as someone who one day will have a status in the heavens and in the spiritual realm in the malakut they just walked right past her she kept lowering herself entering through the door of repentance to fix her state and with her repentance her toba her state returned from a alaqa from a clot into an insanun kamil a perfect human being she only took still even with that she still just took her maqam ha anta wa rabbuk you and your lord as for you o murid you never benefit from a trial because you're veiled by yourself through your surroundings through your environment instead of having a sincere principled position with your lord not fearing the blame of those who will blame you and critique you for the sake of god you stumble instead on the simplest thing if you flee from yourself to god fa firru ila allah then you're not fleeing from a human being to god that means that you're distant if you're fleeing from a human being to god you're fleeing from yourself to your lord min nafsika ila rabbik this is true fleeing this is firar this is wayfaring this is tartib this is how the arrangement of the path is undertaken when you recognize directly that yourself your lower self is worthless then you truly become a blood clot then we welcome you to come study the name of thy lord who created But if you think you're advancing from stage to stage learning the secret to secret of the path the different asrar that we teach how can you see ru'yat that al-maula have a direct vision of the essence of the lord so the goal is to see with god's light and the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam says fear the insight of the believer because he sees with god's light taqu fi rasat al-mu'min fa innahu yara bi nurillah he sees with the light of the basira of his inner vision this is not a submitter a muslim that we're talking about this is a mu'min a believer and god is the wali the friend of those who believe he brings them out from darkness to the light yukhrijuhum min adh-dhulumati ila an-nur the wali the friend of god is the one who possesses the language the properties the acts the attributes and the essence of light he's khabir is fasal bihi khabira ask about arrahman ask a khabir a knower a direct expert one who's aware of the nur and of the dhulumat he has expertise in darkness and in light he knows their states he knows their pitfalls he knows the awhal wal dhulumat the different puddles of darkness upon the path and brings you out from that to light but you have to have the receptivity the desire and the will to fix yourself if you don't benefit from your sheikh you have no sheikh attabi'uka ala an tu'allimani says musa i will follow you may i follow you on condition that you teach me if you don't follow you're ignorant and have no knowledge and are not taught i am your imam you are my ma'mum i am the leader in this prayer and you follow my movements you follow in order to learn you're not worshiping the sheikh musa says attabi'uka i follow you musa says i have to walk behind you and i don't have the right to even ask or intrude in your instruction method your pedagogy 
your heart and mind can't understand what is hidden in the Sheikh's heart. This is why the Sheikh himself locks his own secret and can't even speak to his own spiritual children. Your foreigners, your gharibs, the Prophet ﷺ before speaking would say, Hal min gharib? Is there a foreigner, a stranger around here? You're strangers even to me. We give you access to what your heart can tie itself to and attach itself to. We bind your camel and we have trust in God. Musa salam, God's direct converser, Kalim al-Bari, he still couldn't penetrate into this affair between Al-Khidr and his Lord. You don't even know God's kalam, God's speech. Even if you're a hafiz al-Quran, someone who's memorized the entirety of the Quran, you just see one method, one exemplification of God's light. And it affects you. It changes your life. It transforms you right after bay'ah. You rejoice. You burst forth. Everyone testifies about God's blessings of being proximate to Allah. As soon as they take the nur, they go out on their testimonials. And there's a qurb, however, that there's a proximity to God that causes you to pass away. This proximity that you're speaking of, you're still just affirming your own existence. And you can't accept that type of proximity. If you had it, you would have no tongue to express it in the first place. There were then questions concerning the spiritual significance of Hajj as well as levels of da'wah. The Sheikh comments, Hajj is God's house, the great Hajj is to do tawaf, to circumambulate around your heart seven times and to stand at the maqam of Arafah or the station and the standing place of Arafah where you know direct ma'rifah, direct knowledge of your Lord. And if you stand there, then Hajj is Arafah, al hajj al Arafah. The seal is an ijaza, permission for calling people unto God. And you call them as the verse says, Ud'u ilallahi ala basira, upon clear insight. You can only call onto God with clear insight in what you see. The question is, do you have a share in knowledge of inner insight, of basira? Do you have direct vision, mushahada? Do you see this light? Do you have the reality of basira? Do you have the haqiqa of basira? Do you have the three stages of da'wah, of calling onto your Lord? If you have knowledge of the reports about God, ilm al-khabar, based on books, that's one type of da'wah. If you surrender to what the people of God say, then you're calling upon ilm al-basira, or you're calling to God based on just conceptual knowledge of basira, of inner vision. But if you see the light, then you can call with ayn al-basira, the direct eye of inner insight. And if you drink from khamratu tanzil, from the wine of descending revelation, that's still a higher calling. You say, I became a son. You cannot enter the heart unless you're a son. You're not a body that enters into the heart. You actually return to your root, to your asl. These ruhaniyin, these spiritual beings, this word is used very problematically, especially in contemporary discourse. Ruhani is typically associated with having jinn servants. But the ruhani, the spiritual one, Understand, is the one who understands Amriyatul Rububiyyah, the affair of lordship. Yes'alunaka ani ruh they ask you of the ruh, say it's from the affair of the Lord. The Ruhani is the one who has a path that is founded upon Shari knowledge, upon the book and the Sunnah, the behavioral model of the Prophet. To become an elevated ruh, an elevated spirit that ascends to God. The dividing line, the partition between the spirit and the clay is this aql, this binding, qualifying intellect. He lets the ruh, the, the spirit, ascend through knowledge of the revealed law of sharia, tied to the aql, tied to the intellect, and descends that knowledge into the form of the body. This is the ruhani, the expert, the khabir, in ascending the ruh, the spirit, to al-amriya to the affair of the Lord. With a aql, with an intellect that is expansive and open to what the Prophet ﷺ has. He ties it in the aql, that knowledge in the intellect. This aql is like the storehouse of secrets of knowledge of the spirits. And they revealed and disclosed through the revealed permissions of the law, the shari hukum, 
into the level of bodily forms. This is the Insanul Kamil. This is the Ruhani. The Ruhanis are Zunudun Mujannada. They're, they know each other. The Ruhani has a fingerprint that he leaves or she leaves in the spiritual realm of the All-Merciful, the Malakut Ar-Rahman. He has knowledge of previous and future Ruhaniyin because they have an ihtilaf, they have a commingling amongst each other as well as, I think he, he said here, an, an ihtilaf, a, a differences in the, in the sense that they keep, stay within their own borders and, and limitations. You heard a woman's voice. The one who accompanies Noor is Noor. Light, the one who accompanies and stays with light is light. It's dwell, the dwelling place of light is the heart. When you dwell therein, you are from it, and it is from you. And taminni wa ana minka, as the Prophet ﷺ told Ali, you are from me and I am from you. We are never separate, because Ali had passed away completely in him ﷺ. The Nabi ﷺ is sitting in a high place. You say this with respect to the perception that you can attain to with regard to his high standing. But in reality, his standing is beyond all perceptions, beyond all stations. His nur is first, his nur is last. And we only attain an understanding of his elevation with respect to where we are. With sheikhs under him, you say. The sheikhs are sitting under him and they were conversing. The sheikhs are speaking to him والسلام, at this high station. And they spoke to him, alayhi salatu salam, but you didn't understand. Then he, alayhi salatu salam, said, raise this man from Kurdistan. All you understood when he, alayhi salatu salam, said, raise him. That's all you understood from the conversation. And we pray that you become among the people who are raised, the people of perception. But I want you to remember, this is a dream. You cannot incline to it too much in your wayfaring. The guiding criteria in the wayfaring is direct mushahada, direct vision. This is why our tariqah is one of direct vision of mushahada. The one who doesn't see, I'm not his shaykh and he's not my disciple. Man lam yushahid, lastu bi shaykhihi, wa laysa bi muridi. If you don't see the nur of your wali, if you don't see the nur of your nabi, if you don't see the nur of your lord, you're not part of this path. Then, the Sheikh uh, received a question from South Africa. He said, my mother is part of the people of uh, the house, the Ahlul Bayt, the Prophet Sallam's family. My mother is, but my father is not. Should I accept sadaqah? Can I accept charity? The Sheikh said, it's haram for the people of the household, the family's Prophet Sallam, to receive sadaqah. They receive it and give it to others, but they accept gifts. Hadiyya for them is permissible. Sadaqa is muharram, it's, prohi- it's prohibited. The Ahlul Bayt are the people of the cloak of the Kisa, the people, the children of Fatima and Ali, of Hassan and Hussein, their offspring. And it comes through and passes through the father's line. If your mother is from the Ahlul Bayt, this is a source of great pride and honor. Your father has tanasub, he has a familial relationship, you might say with the dhurriya, the offspring of the Nabi And he says, the first who will enter the garden are my family, Ahlul Bayt, and Ansabi, those who are affiliated with me. You have a nasab, an affiliation. That's a great honor. In the days of the past, the daughters of Sharif or Sayyid families were only married off to the sons of Ahlul Bayt. In contrast, males were married to non-Ahlul Bayt because a boy is ascribed or lineage passes through the father's side. Your pride is to be the garden under the foot of your mother. Be her servant because she is from Ahlul Bayt. Serve her with that twofold intention of being, of serving your mother and serving a daughter of the Prophet ﷺ. You Moreover, saw the nur of our grandfather. You saw the light of Jadduna alayhi salatu salam. He alayhi salatu salam says, I am the grandfather of every God conscious believer, every, every taqi, and ajaddu kulli taqi. And if his light dwells in your heart, if you are of the people of the house of Ahlul Bayt, people of taqwa, the people of God consciousness, then he's your grandfather. And I send my salams to your mother, and I say, Hani Allaha bik wa bika laha. May she rejoice with you and may you rejoice in her. 
May God gather us with those who love our Prophet and those who love the Prophet's family and who are ascribed to him in any way. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama barak ta'ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alamin innaka hamid majid innaka hamid majid innaka hamid